Welcome to Tough Tips. I'm Ellie, an SEO and content strategist at Tough, and today I'm going to help you predict the future. Well, we're going to do SEO forecasting. So I'm going to help you determine the impact or how much organic traffic you can get based on your SEO efforts. So SEO forecasting, typically people use one of two models forecasting models. They use either keyword forecasting, um, which typically uses keyword search volume. You take your list of target keywords and then you look at the average click-through rate to determine the total traffic you'll get based on those keywords. And as we know, people are most likely to click the top search result. So the click-through rate is much higher for something that's in the position of one. And then as you drop in the search results to two and three and so on, your click-through rate or traffic gets lower. Uh, And then the other model that is used is statistical forecasting. So statistical forecasting uses past historical data and mathematical formulas to predict what your traffic will be in the future based on your past. It usually uses linear functions or exponential smoothing, but uh, we don't need to worry about the actual mathematical terms for it. We just need to know that it predicts the future based on the past. And it's typically typically more accurate than keywords alone because um, it does take into account how your site has performed uh, in the past and currently. Today, so the method that we're going to use actually combines statistical forecasting and keyword forecasting to predict um, how much traffic you'll get from your SEO efforts. So what you'll need to forecast is you'll need your Google Analytics to pull your organic search traffic from. You'll need Google Search Console if you're going to pull your click-through rates um, from there and your, your keyword positions from there. And then you'll also want your keyword research. So the list of keywords that you are planning on targeting in the future. And then this forecasting template that's right here. And I will show you how to use this in a little bit. And then one more thing, if you are a newer newer site, you may also want to use this um, site called Advanced Web Ranking. And what it has is the click-through rates, uh, the organic click-through rates on average. It has different categories or industries, and then also has just in general year-over-year click-through rates. Um, So you can use this to estimate the average click-through rate that your site will have if you don't have an idea of what that will be yet. Um, But if we go back in here, a couple notes, the data that you're you're going to pull, again, you're going to pull the organic traffic for the past two to three years. Uh, Two to three years of data will help you make your forecast a little bit more accurate. If you're a new site and you don't have two to three years of data, that's okay. You can pull maybe a year or whatever data you have and use that as a baseline. Of course, it's not going to be as accurate, but it will will help get you started. And then your click-through rate. We have a click-through rate provided in the template, but you can always use the advanced web ranking site here if you want to adjust your your click-through rates that you're using to forecast then your keyword list and the total keyword volume. So if we go into my little uh, SEO forecasting process template, I'll show you exactly how to use the forecasting template we have provided here. So first step is you're gonna pull your historical data. You're gonna go into Google Analytics and pull your monthly organic traffic for every month in the last two to three years. So, and you're gonna put that data in this tab called historical data. You can see here, we've already pulled this um, as an example, all the data for the last few years up until March 2022. And then from that step, first of all, you're going to want to look for a few things in your data just to make sure that your forecast is going to be accurate. The first thing is seasonality. So let's say um, your business that you're forecasting for is like an accounting or a tax business. And of course, there is generally a lot of seasonality there because people really look to file their taxes from January to April. And then, you know, there's a bit of a slump in summer. So if there is seasonality, you're going to want to account for that in your forecast. And then the second thing is outliers. So let's say you're running a campaign one month and it increased your overall traffic by, you know, 30K. 
and that's not typical for you. So you're going to want to take, let's say if one of these were a little bit higher, what you would do, you could do to account for the outlier um, is, you know, forecast what that would be if you weren't running a campaign or kind of look at the, the numbers before and after and kind of guess what that would be. The reason why you would do that is if because you have an outliner that's much greater or lower than the rest of the data set, it will skew the forecast that you have to be, you know, higher than it normally would be without that data set there. Another thing that you might have outliers for is if in your data, um, when you're pulling this, you're going to want to look for bot traffic. So if you have a month where you had a lot of bot traffic or any bot traffic at all, you should remove that before you add it to your forecast. So now that you have all of your numbers here, the next step is you're going to go into the forecast tab. And once we go into the forecast, first we want to get a no change forecast. So what this means is like if you hadn't done any SEO or anything, what would your site's traffic growth be just based on what it has been in the past? And so that's when you're going to use the, the forecast linear function. And that is included here. If we look at the no change forecast column, you can see that here. So for example, just to make sure that your forecast is accurate, you're going to run to want to run this. Um, to compare the actual traffic results to your forecast. We knew this was pretty accurate because before we had even had April, um, you can tell that the forecast was like just 100 off, which is fairly accurate when you're trying to predict the future. So, you know, the forecast template is right, the function is right there, um, and you'll do that for all the months that you have. Now, that's the statistical forecasting. You can also see this reflected in this chart here, which will update. Um, as you add in your values. And then the next step after that is where you're going to add your keyword forecasting. So how would that no change forecast change or increase after you've been targeting a few keywords and you start to rank in the search results? So we have a click through rate. You'll go to the click through rate here, that tab, and then you'll add in your keyword list. And you might want to also add in what you're currently ranking for it. So if you are currently ranking three, you might even want to add into your forecast the click-through rate for that, just to make it a little bit more accurate. And then you'll take the monthly search volume that is predicted that those keywords have, and you're going to times it by the click-through rate, the average click-through rate per position. So for this, I just used, okay, let's say, you start targeting these keywords and you start getting in the top 20 um, in the first I don't know, one or two months. Uh, and so I did that for all of the keywords that we have on this list. And then I get a total keyword volume. And you can add that number to your forecast number and you can get about how much that would be, let's say, if your keywords rank in the top 20. Of course, we know that that doesn't always happen and they don't all tend to rank in the top 20 um, at the same time. So what this forecast is meant to do is just give you a general start to forecasting. Um, but what you can do is you can, once you start getting those rankings and you know what you're ranking for for each keyword, you can create another column here. I just use top 10, top 20, and top three, but you can use whatever you want. Um, you can use, you can add in top five, you can add in top seven if you wanted to make your growth a little bit smoother. Uh, you can also add in another column um, that actually accounts for the current positions that you have for these keywords. And then you probably get even more accurate numbers as far as how much traffic you'll get depending on your position. So once you have your total volumes, you'll add this into the keyword movement tab. And this will be the estimate of how much traffic you'll get based on your statistical modeling and your keyword modeling at the same time. And a couple more things to note if you use this forecasting model is that it's meant to live. So it's meant to change as your performance changes. So it's not going to stay the same always because you're going to add more keywords. And when you add more keywords, um, you'll want to update your forecast for the keyword movement movement that you've seen with those keywords. 
Um, you'll also want to you know, make adjustments if you see that your click-through rate is a little bit higher than the, the forecast. And then again, if you have seasonality, you might want to adjust it for those months that you have a, a slower business. Um, so this forecasting model will help you get started. Um, but if you have any questions uh, or wanted to learn more about you know, SEO or any growth strategies, you can always go to the toughgrowth.com blog and check out the, um, the case studies and the posts and guides that we have there. All right, thanks.